Right, hello, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Boys Down Under, and my, oh my, that was incredible. Wow, what what a final day. It, it was exciting, it was emotional, but overall, all I felt was just pure happiness. Uh, before we go any further, though, if you guys are enjoying the video, please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel. Um, I appreciate all of you who do subscribe and every, all of you who watch my videos, so thank you to all of you guys. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. And wow, there we there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Season over. And this isn't going to be, you know, like a, a season review vid as, as you can tell by the title, but it has been one hell of a ride and one hell of a season in which so much has gone on and it has been hectic 24-7 all the way through. These last 10 months have been absolutely incredible. And yeah, wow. Well, yesterday we just finished it off. We finished it off, you know, our way. The only way, the best way, the Celtic way. And I was a bit surprised at first, you know. I was, I, I, you know, when the lineups came out at around 8 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Celtic named a full strength lineup. At first I thought, well, what the hell is this? But then it clicked to me. Ange wanted to send out the fans and send out the season in style and and really make it a special day to remember and the whole match was just pure annihilation 80 percent possession almost 700 passes 91 passing accuracy motherwell didn't get a look in we held the ball all day and and right from the get-go it was a ma it, it was always going to be how many goals could celtic score despite it taking 20 minutes for kyogo to, to score one of the most impossible goals I, I've seen, like, it was just impossible to score from there, but he did somehow. You know, I, it was a, still, it was going to be a matter of how many, not if any, you know. And David Turnbull, he sent his old team to the shops for a hot dog. And he scored Celtic second, which I thought was vintage Turnbull, even though David Turnbull is only 22 years old. You know, that is scary how good Turnbull can get, and I cannot wait to see the, 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 the heights he reaches in the Celtic jersey. The third goal... My, my, jeez, it was just like Celtic wanted to recreate the League Cup final winning goal. You know, I, I remember, I'm not sure many of you maybe not have seen it, I don't know, I can't remember how many views it got, but it was a video where I was just, you know, I uh, just sat talking about how Ralston's passing game is very sub-standard and, and, and nothing compared to Juranovic's. Yeah, he put in one of the balls of the day. You know, he, that, was, that, was, that was such a class ball, pretty much identical to Rogic's in... The League Cup final, and Kyogo finishes almost the exact same way, first time on the volley, puts it past the keeper. You know, it was stunning, stunning composure from our Japanese striker. We went into the break, 3-0 up, 3-0 on the final day. Celtic Park was absolutely buzzing. It sounded great on the telly, I can't even lie, and we just did not stop during the second half. You know, it took almost 15 minutes. But we all knew we had to get in. He, we all knew he was going to get in on the action. You know? <laughs> Jota, our superstar from Portugal. We, he was never, ever, never going to get on that score sheet and get involved. Uh, you know, he cleaned up a sloppy touch from Dyson Mida. You know, I don't think he was offside at all. But it doesn't matter. He scored. And, you know, it's just caps off for Jota himself. An absolutely incredible season for him as well. And this, his first season in the Celtic jersey and hopefully the first of many, but then came the 60th minute, and that is Ange's typical super sub time, but we knew it was something else. We knew it was special, and the stadium absolutely erupted for Celtic's wizard of Oz, Tom Rogic, a man who has given Celtic and us Celtic fans so many memories over the years. Celtic Park, they sent off a true modern-day legend of the football club in style, you know, Celtic Park, it, the fans, the atmosphere, the, 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 the claps, the roar, it moved Tom to tears, leaving the field. He embraced Ange as he walked off. And I was in nearly nearly in tears myself. That was, I was emotional. That, you know, that, that had me, yeah. That had me in my feels. And that was, that, that was, yeah. But I can't, we, they, we sent off Tom Rogic the right way and he deserves it. It was a shame he didn't get the goal. He hit the post once. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So, so emotional, but we'll talk about that a bit later. But the game kept on going. 67th minute, a minute so famous for Celtic. 
you know, George, Jack and Marcus scored the goal of the day. An overhead kick. I wouldn't claim as a bicycle. I think for a bicycle, you need to have, you know, left the ground being mid-air. But he saw it was an overhead kick regardless. It was absolutely incredible stuff from the Greek freak. Um, then we had James McCarthy. He was denied the goal of the season by Cameron Carter-Vickers. So maybe we'll have to do, look into that, see if there's any background beef going on behind the scenes at the club between them two. But then the 84th minute comes. Eruption again. This time, welcoming onto the field in his final appearance as a Celtic player, near Baton. He put on the captain's arm and, and, and signalled his time at Celtic over yet again. So emotional. That was just, had me in my feels right again, just as I started to you know, calm down from Tom Rogic, as <laughs> Tom Rogic's departure. But then the 90th minute to finish off the day, a day which had been already been so tantalising, so spectacular for everyone at the club for every fan watching um, and in the stadium at home, George Giacomarcus. It was scrappy, but it went in the back of the net and it puts him at equal first on the Premier League's, uh, Premiership's top goal scorers. And if things stay as they are, he will be taking home a golden boot for this season and his first season in Scotland, despite pretty much playing only half a season. But then came the celebrations and... You know, it was incredible. Every part of the celebrations was absolutely amazing. You know, seeing every member of the backroom staff, every single player in the squad, our Japanese boys, our Japanese boys as translator, you know, Celtic Park was absolutely rocking. I was so jealous. I could only imagine and see what it was like on the telly to be there in person. It would have been so memorable. But, you know, then Andrew's speech. That he has a way with words that you know a lot of managers can't. You know he has that passion in him, and you can see exactly what Celtic mean to him. You can see exactly what the fans. He he, under, he understands Celtic football club. He understands that the Celtic fans. We aren't just fans. We have Celtic in our DNA. We bleed green and white. And he was nearly in tears himself. And I know you guys have all heard it, but I'm gonna repeat the quote again. And for you. The best fans on the planet. Unbelievable. You've embraced me, embraced my family, embraced this jumper. I want everyone to enjoy today, enjoy the summer, and we'll come back bigger and better because we never stop. It gave me absolute goosebumps. And it sent a roar around Celtic Park we hadn't heard that day. You know, it's in seeing Celtic lift that league trophy, you know, for the first time with fans since the 2018-2019 season. It was so emotional and it was so moving, but it was so special. You know, Ange had his beautiful family there with him. You know, uh, all the boys had their national flags and families as well. And the celebrations, you know, as well afterwards. Glasgow is green and white yet again, you know. It has been... You know, Far too long. This year has been too long. Celtic fans, they absolutely took over the streets of Glasgow with their flags and flares. And the great thing is there was no violence. We celebrated in style. It may have been rowdy. It may have been completely and utterly passionate, which you cannot take away passion from Celtic fans. But we celebrated in style as true champions should. And the 6-0 win was just an added surplus. But I want to take this time to say thank you properly to Tom and to Nir. They have been true servants to this club over the last nine years. I wish, I wish so dearly that it could be 10 years. I'm still hoping it's a joke gone too far, but I think that's just me being in a stage of denial. But Tom, our wizard, has arguably had his finest season in a Celtic jersey. He showed signs of vintage Tom Rogic, the our wizard of Oz all season long, you know, and Nir Baton, Mr. Reliable, Throughout his whole career at Celtic, he has been Mr. Reliable. And this season, he has been a true leader of the squad and an amazing mentor for a young Leo Labarda. They, de they deserve the world and they deserve to enjoy this title and deserve to enjoy their, career, their, their, their time at Celtic for the rest of their careers, wherever it may be. But it doesn't make it any less sad and it doesn't make me any much happier that that you know I'm, I'm just so happy that we got to send them out on a positive send them out with two trophies send them out with a league you know after the struggles of last year to send them out like this yeah it was it, it was absolutely beautiful and in the famous words of dr zeus 
don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. And I'm going to have to do a special video for both of them because that little segment just there isn't going to do it justice. We need to talk about it and that's going to probably come sometime later this week. Now that the season's over, there's no more match content to do. So we're going to have to just find some other things to talk about. But there is so much we can talk about, without a doubt. And But back to, back to last night, it, you know, it was such a magical night here, you know, in Australia. Seeing it all on the telly and the celebrations on social media was just, you know, it was overwhelmingly incredible. I think that's a great way to put it. It was overwhelmingly incredible. You know, so jealous I couldn't be there in person. But, you know, hopefully the next time Celtic League the li well, whenever the next time Celtic lift the League Cup trophy, I will be able to be in Scotland. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But the thing is, none of this, none of this would have been possible without Ange Postacoglu, the greatest Australian manager of all time. You know, it just, I have so much to say, but yeah, no. Seeing, I, I've, I've missed so much in this video. I need to, I'd have to make, you know, make this like a six part series to be able to cover everything I wanted to. I haven't even spoken, you know, about Callum McGregor and how his heroics and how he's been incredible. I just there's been so much I haven't talked spoken about, but I can't keep this going for any longer. I'm gonna, I'm too emotional already. I'm still emotional from last night. This has just been an absolutely incredible season, and yeah, we'll go from there. But that is all from me. So remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. You guys don't have to leave anything in the comments below for this video. You know, you can if you want, you can, but just enjoy, enjoy today. <laughs> And enjoy the celebrations, like Ange said, you know, enjoy today, enjoy the summer, because we'll be back next year, bigger and better, because we never stop. And until next time, hail, hail.